Derek Ray on as our guest. Derek is a staple of any football commentating. He has commented Bundesliga for years. is a big expert on that. Reason we have him is also a cultural staple within the video game business. He plays or he's a commentator on FIFA where I will play and many others, I bet. Um, and I don't know that what's your what's your kind of approach or thoughts of, of Derek as a as a commentator and as a man. Well, first of all, I think Derek is one of the few people in in generations, there are not many of them, when you just listen to his voice, you get that feeling of football, excitement, knowledge, passion, and so on. And, and Derek is there. And what I also, as a colleague uh, uh, of mine, someone that I look up to in the terms that he work on his language, because Derek is into everything. He speaks the German names much better than me, uh, and uh, so in in all matter of of uh, his his job, he's a role model for, uh, for for people in and around him. What can I say after that introduction? <laughs> <laughs> not just from no, one Fjordtoft, not just from one Fjordtoft, but from <laughs> two Fjordtofts. So, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be on with both of you. Our pleasure, Derek, and. We'll just go straight into it. What, what we're trying to do is basically we're having a a kind of hyper intensive Bundesliga preview, and I guess where we'll start, Derek. Now that you're going to go into this another season commentating on the German Bundesliga, why will this season be better than all the other seasons before it? Okay, I'll try and give you a few good reasons. First of all, I think Bayern are going to be more interesting. I'm not going to say they're going to be better or worse, but I think in a funny sort of way, the end of the Lewandowski era is going to give us more to talk about. So that could mean Sadio Mane, that could mean somebody like Leroy Zane out of necessity, becomes a better player. It could mean that we're talking more about young Matisse Tell, who's just joined the club. I think there are many different reasons why that could be the case. I think Dortmund on balance will be better. I'm a little bit worried about the trajectory of late. And, of course, our thoughts are certainly with Sebastian Allaire, and we hope he makes up a very speedy recovery and return to action. I think Leverkusen excite me because... I like a lot what they have done in the last year or so. I think Simon Rolfes is one of the best when it comes to scouting networks. I think they have the perfect coach in Gerardo Zeoane. So having kept Patrick Schick, I think they are ready to explode right off the bat. And then you have Leipzig, who have won a trophy for the first time, and on and on and on. So I think at the business end, it's going to be dynamic. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll start then with the top. The very first, we got the top four. And before I go into or ask you guys who can actually break into that top four or five, let's talk about Dortmund because we've dealt with Bayern and Dortmund. Dortmund as the main challenger, um, but not getting close enough. Had a seemingly good transfer window. Marco Rosa goes out. I guess let's start with what happened with Marco Rosa at Dortmund and why is Edin Terzis the man to uh, take over and hopefully uh, topple Bayern for that for their point of view? Well, thank you, Marcus. First of all, we have to thank Marcus, Derek, because of his wearing the uh, Europa Liga shirt of Eintracht Frankfurt. So, <laughs> so I, I couldn't wear it. It was too tight to me for me. But uh, the interesting question, and, and Derek uh, uh, noted uh, upon us as well, because this is quite interesting how Dortmund is built up as a club. And there are a lot of strong people in and around the club. You have Watzke, the CEO. You have uh, Sork going out, Sebastian Kell coming in. You have Matthias Sammer as a advisor and and then you had Edin Terzic at that time as a technical advisor whatever Ooh. that means for a Marco Rosa coming in so at the end of the season Marco Rosa sits down with them and his first question is listen boys I would love to have some more more res report re uh, re report and uh, understatement and uh, support from you I found the English yeah. word at the end so I, I would like to have some more support from you and then quite out of nothing, suddenly Dortmund said, well, 
you won't have the job next year. We'll put on Edin Terzic. So that was the message to me. I guess that surprised a lot of us because they they bought they had a buyout clause taking him from Gladbach of of, of eight million, I think, or five million uh, in 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 it was a high transfer fee, and suddenly he is gone. With Edin Terzic, Dortmund now, and with Sebastian Kehl coming in, this is a good time for them to make to make something new. A, they have had problem with their injuries. That is very, very important for them to solve. Talking about the American Reiner, I mean, you saw him crying on different... We've, we've seen Erling Haaland had trouble with his injuries and so on and so on. And uh, Derek, you came on to that because I think although they got good signings, good defenders, because they had to do something at the back, with Sebastian Allaire out now, and we wish him so much all the best. And as it is today... Uh, Sebastian Kehl said he'll be back, but it could l- be months. So what they do, we don't know. Adayem is coming on. How much do you think they have now the team from player to player to challenge Bayern at the top? I'm not sure they're quite there, Jan. That, that would be my assessment when I look at Dortmund from top to bottom. I do like what they've done defensively. I think they had to make those changes defensively. So Zule and Schlotterbeck, I think, excellent additions. And it means that Hummers, Mats Hummers, may not be a regular, may play some of the time, may play in a back three. If they play a back three, may be a reserve. If it's a back four, we shall see about that. I'm still a bit worried about the Dortmund softness that we've seen. And I think the softness has often been in the fullback or wingback positions. And that has not really been addressed as we are talking now. Rafael Guerrero, I thought, was a terrific player a couple of seasons ago, but dropped off significantly in the last campaign. Thomas Meunier, of course, is still an acquired taste. Did get better when he played last season. But I think these are still the weak areas. I quite like them from middle to front. Certainly, Adeyemi is a good addition to the squad, somebody who I think should be a good fit. You spoke about young Reina there. Certainly hope he comes back, although I'm told that Dortmund are not going to rush him. They're going to be quite conservative with regard to his health, and understandably so. So I think my verdict would be, yes, it's good. The potential is there, but it's not quite complete looking as far as I'm concerned in terms of being able to chase down Bayern. If I may just say that, I think that the player for player, Dortmund, when you compare them with Bayern, Bayern have that winning DNA culture kind of thing. The big challenge for Dortmund is that at times last season, you saw when uh, when, uh, Emre Can, when Hummels, when Royce, at the same time, we're not good enough or mentally not the leaders. And sometimes Reina, sometimes Haaland, Bellingham, who is now left there to take to, to be in charge, they have to have that mental strengthness mm-hmm. to take the next step. And we'll see how quick that will be. I would have said that Sebastian Allaire and Adeyemi would have scored as many goals, them total, as Erling Haaland. I think they could do that. But mm-hmm. there is a lot of question marks. But... I mean, everybody that loves the Bundesliga just wish that Dortmund can challenge uh, Bayern. Is it then a matter of Bayern versus Dortmund this season? Or can we see the likes of RB Leipzig or Leverkusen or someone else, if you care to share, who can break into and kind of compete for the title? We have Leverkusen. Derek, you mentioned Simo Rolf is in the excellent job they do at Leverkusen with the player development and the recruitment. We have Leipzig who were a different side completely under Tedesco and under Marsh, very hapless, so to speak. How do you see that working out? And um, you guys can, sure, one take Leipzig, one Leverkusen. Well, I'll take Leverkusen if I have the choice, because I'm actually going to predict, and this is maybe a bold prediction, that they are going to finish second in the Bundesliga this season. That now, is a statement. Dortmund, that is like a statement. Yeah, we like well, done. <laughs> well, I think most people would reckon Dortmund are going to be runners-up and maybe Leipzig after that. But I just, as I said earlier in the introduction, I think that the chess pieces are there. They haven't really lost significant pieces and they all have gained, you know, with the signing of Adam Hlozek, who I think will be somebody for the future, maybe not for the present, but to still have Schick, to have Wirtz coming back, we hope probably after the World Cup, we shall see. Hopefully he makes it to the World Cup. That might be touch and go. But I just think with 
Davos, the next step for them is to be that little bit more consistent. What I liked about them last season, and Jan, you watched them as often as I did, I liked the fact that they were so versatile tactically, so flexible. So in one game, it might be you know, a high press. In another game, it might be sitting deeper and nullifying the opposition and then playing on the breaker looking for set pieces. And I think Seoane has brought that to Leverkusen. So I see them as being very well equipped to, if not be the team that knocks out Bayern, at least can take it to Dortmund and Leipzig and get very close or, as I'm predicting, actually finish ahead of the two of them. And interesting enough with, with Leverkusen, I mean, we are talking about Simon Rolf as a great lad, very likable, but also very knowledgeable. And uh, so it's a new era at Leverkusen with Rudy Fowler, a uh, fantastic Galleons figure for, for them. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to to watch them. And as they have a Swiss coach, the, the last time I spoke to him, we were discussing who won the Eurovision Song Contest for Switzerland, <laughs> being a Canadian. And well... Well, he, he knew. He knew, yeah. Who was it? it uh, Celine Dion. Celine Dion, well yes. done. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, <I'm>, yes. <laughs> but I'll, I go to Abel Leipzig, because, which was interesting with Abel Leipzig, and I, and I made some notes here about them. I first have to give them a compliment because they have kind of managed to get a lot of money out of players yeah. they, quote, don't need. They have sold off. I mean... Thank God for uh, for German football that there are English football clubs because they kind of buy everybody as they don't buy by Bayern. I think what's the big challenge, and I didn't like that result. They had forty seven thousand at home. Jurgen Klopp came there with his Liverpool. Yes, Nunez scored four goals that made the headlines around the world. But that was not a strength for the German Bundesliga and for the challenges. I mean, I don't like friendlies. I don't put a lot of note to them. But that was a game that Leipzig. They they had to stand there because you know Liverpool they they just came from a world trip and they came there winning five nil that that was a bit uh, frightening for them but but Leipzig got to be there they will be up there Tedesco had a great first season in Schalke if uh, you remember Derek of course you do he was second there and then they had problem in the second season you know the German journalists and you know that they will kind of take off the notes from back of the days. But but I think it's very interesting what uh, what uh, Derek is saying about Leverkusen. Uh, I will say, before I, I make my tip, that I will say that Leverkusen, uh, Dortmund and RB Leipzig more or less are at the same level. I mean, um, among them, I can't see any big, big surprises coming into the Champions League uh, group. But I like the statement from from Derek, and what I also like Derek with Leverkusen is that they also saying that I they are going to challenge for him because there have been years now a lot of these Dortmund, a lot of them they they won't say they will challenge Dortmund. Uh, sorry, Bayern. Yeah, and I'm a little bit disappointed in what I've heard from Leipzig so far. Um, you know, they've sort of said the same things as last season, listening to Oliver Minzlaff, the CEO. Yes, they want to secure the Champions League place, which of course they do. But I would have thought after having won a trophy, a major trophy for the first time, maybe a little bit more boldness mm -hmm. would be called for from Leipzig. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, no, we want to, to try to, to beat Bayern. I mean, let's face it, one of these years, somebody will finish ahead of Bayern. It's going to happen. It may not be this season, it may not be next season, but it will happen. And I don't think it makes a, a, a team or a club official look bad by expressing that desire, because I still think, if I look at the Leipzig squad, and I was going over it ahead of commentating from Leipzig this weekend on the DFL Super Cup, and looking at the squad, I mean, it's still really good. We don't know what's going to happen with Konrad Leimer, um, we don't know what's going to happen with David Raum, if he could be an enrichment to the Leipzig squad by the end of the week. But it's still really talented. And, you know, I, I go along with what you said, Jan. I think that it is uh, Auf Augenhöhe, to use the good German yeah. expression. It's at eye level between Leipzig, Dortmund and Leverkusen. But I'd like to hear Leipzig maybe beating their chest a little bit more. If we then go and see, okay, who can maybe challenge top four, top five? You guys seem to see it this way, that Leipzig, Leverkusen and Dortmund are the same level. And then obviously we will chime in with the Eintracht Frankfurt inclusion. Europa League champions, a huge achievement for the club. And in many ways, perhaps a catalyst for what might come in the future. Uh, I'm thinking from the long-term potential, Frankfurt have is one of the most bustling and, and kind of resourceful cities in Germany, along with Munich, there's a lot of potential in the city, a lot of potential in the team. 
how do you see Frankfurt ahead of this season? And obviously, they have a very exciting signing in Mario Götze as well. How do you guys see that work out? And how do you see the season last year in the Bundesliga? Because by all accounts, it was an average season as well in the Bundesliga. Uh, maybe I can start on that uh, if, because I didn't get my shirt on. So I can. Do- <laughs> what is interesting when you see, uh, yes, Mario Götze is a, it's a kind of signal signing. That is that Mario Götze, first of all, great attitude, very likable. He is a guy they are printing shirts for fun now in Frankfurt. The Frankfurt fan are very proud that he's coming there. Yes, he had he hasn't done the potential after winning the World Cup for Germany, scoring in 120 minutes, of course, fantastic. And he's like a darling of of German football. So, first of all, I will also say a praise to Mario Götze. He could have gone the easy way. He could have gone somewhere else. The hard way for him is to go back to Germany because then he has to prove himself. But I went through the... the oh, they have got a lot of new players. I think that, uh, like Alario from, uh, from Leverkusen, I think he's one of them who praying every night that Kostic won't be sold. Right. Because Kostic, because he's talking to West Ham, he will love the the uh, the uh, the the crosses from uh, from uh, our friend uh, Kostic. So so let's see what's happening there. That's that's what is problem to do this prediction because some of these uh, clubs could lose uh, some of their players. But but Derek, what I like about Frankfurt, and I also like yes, I liked him because I'm a fan of Frankfurt. But I I feel that. Frankfurt could be like a symbol for the best of the rest kind of club who try to do it financially right, have the right people, have good coaches, good managers, a good board and and all that. Yeah, and and can I say first of all, Jan, that I think the DFL deserves some credit here because it was a masterstroke to have Frankfurt at home against Bayern in the opening game. I was hoping they were going to do that. Usually, of course, it's Bayern at home, but Frankfurt, the Europa League winners, with the emotion of of that still fresh in the memory at home against Bayern, absolutely perfect. Now, your old club, I think, have done many things right so far during the summer. Markus Kroesche, I think, making very sensible decisions and correct decisions for the trajectory of the club. Uh, we've spoken about Goetze. I think where Goetze will really help will be in home games against more defensive-minded opposition. Yeah. Because the number of times I thought, especially second half of the season, sounds like you'd probably go along with me on this, the number of times where it was all a bit stodgy and a bit kind of difficult to, to, to operate and lacking fluency in some of those home games. And I think he'll help. He'll help them play front foot football when that is needed. Colin Muani is another one who I think will be a, a good signing and somebody who's going to to play a lot will help them in that regard. I am a bit worried about Kostic if he goes. Now, as we talk now, we don't know what no. he really wants. Um, personally, I hope he stays in Frankfurt. I think that it might be a mistake for him at this point in his career to think he can go to somewhere like West Ham and replicate what he has because we, the three of us know what he has there. You have a, a public that is pretty unique and an atmosphere that, that's pretty unique week in, week out. And they're going to be in the Champions League and a top seed in the Champions League in their group. So why would you want to throw that away? So we'll see what happens with him. The other one, of course, is Hinter Egger, who we probably have to talk about. His abrupt retirement, um, we won't get into the reasons for it, but not having a pillar like Hinter Egger is going to mean that there will be some psychological changes, even though I think the best defender last season was Evan Ndika, and he's another one they will certainly hope to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you're just saying that the first three games of the season for Eintracht Frankfurt, correct me if I'm wrong, is Magdeburg, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. <laughs> and, it, and it's so typical Eintracht Frankfurt because Frankfurt, they have the... the the symbol of the alte diva, the old diva, yeah. you know. So they will probably beat Bayern mm-hmm. in the first game. Of course, they will. Then they will somehow get that trophy in Finland when they pay them, and then they will lose to Magdeburg. <laughs> and 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 I would say this as a joke, but I know the Andrea Frankfurt fan. They will think that this is possible. That could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it, it is. Why not? I think you have to dream, and uh, but you have to expect the unexpected with Eintracht as well, as you know better than anyone, Jan. Yeah. yeah, and there will be the challenge of they need squad depth. They were competing on all fronts last season. They'll do the same this year. Um, so it'll be exciting. If we move on, and actually to the teams that finished above Frankfurt, you've got a lot of exciting teams. You have Union you know, Berlin, you have Cologne, who were excellent under Baumgart, you have Freiburg. You have potentially Hoffenheim, who started very well last season and then fell off towards 
tail end of March. How do we see that going? I guess how I can frame the question just to change it up a bit. What manager of those is the most exciting to watch or is the most, yeah, the most attractive and who you like? Uh, I'll give you Freiburg and Christian Streich, not just because of Streich is the obvious one, isn't it? I think everybody's mm. attracted magically to Christian Streich. But I do like the work that's been done by Clemens Hartenbach and his staff during the summer. I think Freiburg have had a heck of a, a, a summer, and I mean that in a good way. Ritsu Doan, um, Daniel kofi Jere from St. Pauli, Michael Gregoric, who, let's remember, was the key to Augsburg staying up. Without his goals on the second half of the season, I don't think they would have stayed up. So you have this already strong formula, and okay, they've lost Schlotterbeck to Dortmund, but they've brought in uh, somebody of the quality of Matthias Ginter. You know, mm. so somebody like that going home. I think Freiburg are going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I know that the, the demands will be considerable and they have been considerable when they've been in Europe before. But I would see them under Streich as, as leading that charge among some of those other clubs that you mentioned. And, and also, I mean, the German Bundesliga got to find the brand because the German Bundesliga losing Lewandowski, they're losing Haaland. Bayern Munich, enormous, always in front, makes it a bit boring, you, you may say. Although we, Derek and myself, we will always find a way to find it very, very interesting. But Stefan Baumgart in Cologne, I mean, yeah. he just he just wears a hat, Marcus, like you do sometimes. <laughs> I try to do it. I look like a, 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 a jerk. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Stefan Baumgart, he is an unbelievable coach. He's different. He is very exciting. I mean, just YouTube... Uh, when he's uh, out for a game when, uh, because of Corona, he's like with his dog and he doesn't notice all that kind of thing. So Cologne is sometimes, when people ask me, when Norwegians love to go to English football, of course, and I, I say to them, go to Germany, try to find where Dortmund is on the map, 81,000 every round. But if you go to Cologne, if you go to Gladbach, I mean, on and on and on and on. The atmosphere, the passion of the fans. I, st I still think that I am a big, big lover of English football, as you know, as well. But I think that this passionate fans thing, at the moment, with the atmosphere, the German football is a bit ahead. Right. And I, st I think st uh, Baumgart, the coach of, of Cologne, he kind of symbolized that kind of passion that a lot of the German Bundesliga coaches are missing but he understands the business he understands what Köln and football is all about mm -hmm. and we have then Bo Svensson who, an, who could arguably be stated as the best coach they have had since Kloch and Tuchel they have you know Berlin who were in many ways competing well beyond what we expected of them can we expect them to be up there again or how do we see that well, if I can start with Mainz, uh, then Derek and myself, we, we love Union Berlin, as every football fan do. But but what is interesting in Mainz is that they have put to be together the old gang. They have somehow got Heidelin, uh, who was uh, enormous influential to Klopp and Tuchel, and uh, Schmidt, head of sport, sport director. They got him, the guy with the long hair, you, you, will, you will notice him. And then Bo Svensson come from the Red Bull school. So they just found a way. I've had a pleasure to interview Bo Svensson. A uh, very likable, sensible guy. Uh, interesting how he saved minds and took them on. And um, so it's very two, two, three very interesting teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to watch Mainz actually this weekend in the Pokal as they travel to the Erzgebirge way out east uh, to face Aue in the, the Pokal. So that will be an early test for them. And Bo Svensson has been saying that he's not entirely happy with one or two aspects. That's often the way in preseason. But I would expect that Mainz will be Middle of the table, maybe slightly better. I think that, um, you know, when I look at who they've added, quite like Fulgini, the player who they've got from Angers, playmaking type, and Young Leach, who has joined from Bochum, good defender. Um, so I think that they will be fine. Now, Union, I know that some people believe that this is just going to eventually catch up with them. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, of course, European football again, but higher demands and the fact that they're not the richest club in the Bundesliga. But what they do really well is they unearth talents who are relevant to who they are and what they're about. And that really is down to Oliver Runert 
who is the, the head man when it comes to the sporting decisions. I think in Urs Fischer, they have the perfect coach for Union, both in terms of his interesting Swiss personality and just his tactical decisions. And I freely admit, I thought in the second half of last season, they might run out of steam, especially when Max Kruse left. I thought, OK, we're probably going to see Union slip down the table. They won't be relegated or anything, but maybe down to the sort of the midsection. But they, they proved me wrong on that. And so I'm not going to go against the idea that Union can again push for Europe this season. They've gone very heavily on free agent signings, who they think will, you know, fit the club. People like Yannick Habera, who they've got from Freiburg. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see how Jordan Sibachur does, the striker who plays for the USA in his first season in the Bundesliga. Big shoes to fill, though, mm -hmm. those of Taiwo Awoni. Right. And a team we actually have forgot to mention because they had, by all accounts, a rather poor season for them to be. Always been competing and around the Champions League spot is Gladbach. So Adi Hütter is there. Funnily enough, all of the new managers, only Nagelsmann and Glasner, were the ones that stayed at yeah. their clubs. Hütter leaves. Gladbach end the season fairly well, by all accounts, but still relieve him of his duties. And in comes Daniel Farke. And Gladbach want to bring Norwich Championship Farke in. The ball playing, the, the possession oriented, rather than the Premier League, which was tough for them. Um, is Daniel Farke a good signing for, for Gladbach, Derek? I'm going to say he is, and I'll tell you why, because I think he's going to take them back to the place where they were under Dieter Hecking. I think it's that's certainly the idea behind all this. You know, they've had three years of, if you like, power football, um, you know, from Marco Rosa, first of all, from Adi Huta, uh, that kind of style that wasn't the Gladbach style. And Max Eberl, when he was the sporting chief, basically took a bit of a gamble and said, we are going to change our emphasis here, the change philosophies. And I think it is probably time for a return to, to that older style. And I think what Gladbach really need to do is they need to, to get their personalities more involved. I'm thinking here of Lars Stindl, you know, who's been a bit of a peripheral figure the last little while. He's somebody who, who, is kind of a Mr. Gladbach type. And I'd say the same of Christoph Kramer, players like that. So I, I think it's almost going back to that a little bit. Now, Farke, um, you know, can play attractive football. His teams tend to do that. And I, I've got a feeling that it might be the right move at the right time. I'm not going to say Gladbach are, are back in contention to qualify for Europe necessarily, but I think the football will be better. And I think the mood might be a little bit brighter. What's quite interesting is that Max Erbel, uh, he had, uh, he was very open about it. I have, a, I'm, I'm exhausted. I can't do this anymore. Mm. I, I have to go out. He's one of the most wanted. Bayern Munich wanted him. There was, he's, he, and, and he's, uh, he, from, from what he knows about the whole industry, it's someone you, you don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what is also interesting with Gladbach, and I, I always try to remember people that Gladbach is a big, big club. In the seventies, there was all about Bayern. And Gladbach, they had great, great, great players in Hugh Pinekins and, and the, the rest of them. They were fantastic players. But Gladbach, Derek makes a very good point. Sometimes you appoint managers, but you have a team that is not a mirrored of the coach. So you can have a an energic, gegenpressing kind of team and you get a, a player, a, a coach that wants to, to play football or a different kind of football, but, but a position orientated. Or the opposite. So the last couple of times, I think Gladbach hasn't um, hit the, the, the right one there. And you can see when you saw Gladbach, you, you saw that Hütter, who is also a great coach, but you saw he couldn't he couldn't get the, the, right. the, the team on his side. So I think that Fark is, is, is a quite good thing. He is uh, also is with uh, the second coach that is uh, has his background from... From the uh, the Dortmund the two second team, uh, of course, help me, Derek. I I just lost the uh, the the guy. Uh, we will we will do that. This is unplugged. This is unplugged. It is Eriko Maasen, who is at Augsburg. Go. He's gone to Augsburg. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. He went to Augsburg, and the reason we say that is that you know the school they're coming from. In Germany, you have the 
the Bayern kind of school background kind of coaches. Then you have the Red Bull kind of coaches. And then you have the club friends, if I if I, if I may say. So it's very interesting to see how Farke will do at Gladbach with, with their tradition. It's great. I, I Hopefully, they could, they could be back. If we then look towards the uh, the teams that might struggle this season, and that's not to suggest that the teams that we have not mentioned are the ones that are going to be struggling, but we have promised we are doing a hyper-intensive preview. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who do we think is going to be struggling this season? I'm, I see Augsburg, perhaps. Maybe their ambitions are a bit higher than we might see them. It'll be interesting to hear what you think about the so-called fallen giants of Werder Bremen and, and Schalke coming up. How do you see this developing? Um, I will give you Augsburg as a team who I think finally might get relegated. And I have said that before and I've regretted it. So perhaps I'll be wrong. But I do think one of these years Augsburg are going to fall. And they came pretty close to falling last season. I mentioned Michael Gregorich and his goals. Not having his goals certainly will be uh, a big negative for Augsburg. I just feel that they've struggled in the last few years to kind of know who they are. And we used to know who they were six or seven years ago when they had established themselves in the Bundesliga under Markus Weinziel. It was, you know, very, sometimes defensive football, but it was with a purpose. It was good counter-attacking football. And I just think they've lost their way somewhat. Now, they signed... Young Pepe, the American, paid a lot of money for him, and he hardly kicked a ball, really. Uh, you know, he, he didn't do enough to certainly come close to justifying that tag. And Enrico Masson, as we've discussed, is the coach. He likes to play with two up front. But this is a real test of his mettle as well, being thrown into a Bundesliga assignment with a club that I still think has holes right across it. So um, if you were to push me, I would say that one of my automatic relegated two would be FC Augsburg. What is interesting, as I am uh, the guy with the most uh, nicht abstiegsprämie, uh, being, uh, <laughs> being in some battles uh, uh, to avoid uh, uh, relegation, normally from second league, they will come up one or two clubs that you will know be struggling. What is interesting this year is that Schalke and Werder Bremen coming back and they should normally be in the top league and you it's hard for us to say they will be down there. It's it's interesting that the Schalke fan, they wanted a big name as fans do. They're ending up with Frank Kramer. Maybe that is the right thing to do. But we also know that statistics, statistically, mm -hmm. there will be some people be fired. Uh, uh, Werder Bremen, uh, I think that Ole Werner knows what he's got, what he got to do and what he can't do with his team. Uh, I I would put another one in. I I, I go behind what uh, what Derek said, but I will also put in Stuttgart. I haven't seen enough from them. Uh, in the tr they they tried, they lost some players, but I will see they struggled last year and impressed it that they came back. And there is always a question mark with Hertha Berlin. We we never know what kind of Hertha Berlin they they needed. My old coach Felix Marger to come in and save them last season. He will probably do it again if he is asked. But that. It's interesting to see that what my friend Freddy Bobic will do with Berlin. I think German football need a strong Hertha Berlin, not only a good uh, Union Berlin, but it's going to be a very open. I can see, I can see teams slipping down in the relegation battle this season. That could be very surprisingly. Yeah, the other one I'm a little bit worried about is Bochum this season. Yeah. I think they were terrific last term, and I think most neutral Bundesliga fans enjoyed watching them. And I have to say, if I were to choose my 18 teams in the Bundesliga every year, I would always have Bochum because it's one of my favourite venues to go to, and, and it, it absolutely rocks. And you know, having played there, yeah, exactly, you know, the extent to which it rocks. But I just think the second season syndrome might kick in a little bit for them. And I spoke about having lost... Leitch to Mainz. They've also lost Bella Kotschap to English football. And I just wonder if we're going to see Bochum really having their work cut out for them. I agree with Schalke and Bremen. I think they will do enough. And maybe a little bit more confidence in Stuttgart, but much will depend on Sven Mislintat and his actions at the sporting director in the next few weeks with regard to Kalajic and Sosa. Can they keep players like that? Are they going to have to retool? They've lost Mongala already. Uh, and Hertha, yeah, uh, could be a bit of a mystery, but I, I think they will, broadly speaking, have enough. The, the nickname of Bochum is the Unabsteigbahn. 
yeah. the, the, the team that is not going down. Uh, yeah. We know from the history they are going down. What what I I, I agree with you. The rice. I think that the, the advantage for rice is that they are a team that know straight away this is going to yeah. be a battle against relegation. So will Augsburg. Stefan Reuter is a smart man. Somehow they know they know that will happen. So I, I, I'm with Derek. I love these Bochum teams, these Ruhrgebiet teams being being up there. So I, I hope Rice is also a uh, so likable guy. So uh, hopefully they will be up there. But So it's hard, as you understand. I'm taking away my tip to yeah, go yeah. down. <laughs> no, but we're going to conclude that. We're going to do a very, again, hyper-intensive guessing where I have a few okay. things I want to guess. But one team that I also just want to touch upon briefly is Wolfsburg. Brought in yeah. Niko Kovac, former Bayern Munich, last season, kind of, kind of flirting with relegation a bit, and then they were able to keep it away. But started disastrously. Had a very strong season in the Champions League. Van Bommel didn't work out. Then they brought in Kofeld, and then now they obviously got rid of him. Is this a team where it could go either or for them, or is it steady Eddie mid table? <laughs> I'm going to put Wolfsburg in the same bracket, actually, as Hoffenheim. Two clubs who I think should have done better last season. Hoffenheim fell away. Wolfsburg never really got going after. Well, they did get going, but then they fell away after three or four, after the first three or four weeks. Um, but I think Wolfsburg under Nico Klatsch will be better. He wants to play um, a higher line. He wants to play more intensive football. Uh, they won't have to worry about fitness. Uh, I think that's fair to say under Nico Kovac. And I think all in all, the squad is better than the outcome was last season. So for me, Wolfsburg will be back pushing for Europe again. And I think Hoffenheim will as well. But Andre Breitenreiter, who's done what coaches often do, he's gone somewhere else. He's gone to Switzerland. He's won a title. He comes back with a stock high, but he's no stranger to the Bundesliga. And I expect that will be a, a reasonable fit, all things considered. So, yeah, those two, I'm glad you, you gave me a chance to mention Hoffenheim because I did want to say that, that I think they're on the same boat and the same bracket as Wolfsburg. And I will take you at the end, Marcus, when you go to Hoffenheim, Hoffenheim is a small village. You just go there and then suddenly up on a hill, and Lutz Pfannenstiel, he will kind of yes. come with her, normally with his flag, uh, together with Alex Rosen and my former teammate, and there is out of nowhere, there is a great stadium. Uh, and of course, they have had th the money to do it, but they're also working very, very hard. Mm -hmm. Then you go to Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg is just a, a Autostadt. This is the city of Volkswagen, Volkswagen Arena. The, 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 the people are working three shifters. And then in the middle of that, they have a football team mm -hmm. that has made some great, great players over the years. And I hope they go. And Niko Kovac, uh, it's also uh, one I played against uh, as a team manager. I met him when he was Croatia. We beat him 2-0 and he got fired. But he, he has forgiven me for that. So I, I'm with Derek. I, and with you, Marcus, Wolfsburg, I can see them being better. But also you've seen with uh, with the way the managers, they've been eating managers there and talking about philosophy. They, they get Van Bommel in. Uh, okay, we don't need him. Then we, we need an iPad coach. Uh, we have Florian Kofeld, who is very good at the iPad, but not so good on the sideline. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be very interesting uh, to see. It's going to be a very interesting Bundesliga, Marcus. Very interesting. <laughs> and to conclude, I want champions, the two teams that go down, and top scorer. Oh, start mm. with you, Derek. <laughs> okay. The last one is an interesting one. I have to think about it. But no, champions will be Bayern. Uh, and the two teams to get relegated will be Augsburg and Bochum. And the top scorer will be Patrick Schick. Ooh. I will go champion. I see that the German pundits, they want to say Dortmund to get some headlines. Uh, I, I will say that. You have to say Bayern. Bayern, we had that in the first episode, have a fantastic transfer window. Sadio Mane uh, coming in there, of course. A to delict at the back, tell and so on and so on. A fantastic. But they're losing... A lot of goals, 30, 40 goals. But you have to say, Bayern, hopefully they will struggle against Eintracht in the first game. So there is a mini crisis uh, at Bayern. Who will go down? Uh, I will say Stuttgart. Mm, and I will say uh, Augsburg. I think this is the mm. time for them. So I will say Augsburg and Stuttgart. I will always say a Bayern player. Uh, so I will say Sadio Mane. Mm. Sadio mm -hmm. Mane. I will say that as a top scorer. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
I think that concludes our <laughs> hyper-intensive <laughs> preview. So I'm very glad we had you, Derek, and you, Dad, of yeah. course, uh, to join forces. And then we take on a very exciting Bundesliga season. And you starting this week, correct, Derek? Yes, hope you can join us live from Leipzig on Saturday for the DFL Super Cup. And then I'll be with you from Jan's old stomping ground, Frankfurt, for the opening game of the season, Frankfurt-Bayern. Fantastic. What a start we have in our hands. Thank you so much, Derek. And then I'm sure we'll have you on at some point again. What a great pleasure to be on. Thank you, gents. I enjoyed it very much. Danke, danke und auf Wiedersehen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Thanks for listening in with our passionate chat with uh, Derek Ray. What a man he is. He had his predictions. I had mine. We will love to have your predictions on the different platforms. We are on, on YouTube or the different podcast platforms, or you just send us a tweet as well, uh, who you would like to have on, on our show. So please visit our YouTube uh, and uh, push subscribe to great to have you on board there. Auf Wiedersehen.